Voronoi diagrams have uses in many areas such as archaeology, biology, pathology, hydrology, astrophysics, biology, geometry, and bakery, among others. They are a partition of the plane given a set of points called seeds. For each original seed, there will be a cell in the Voronoi diagram defined as all the points closest to that seed. Today's goal is to efficiently draw Voronoi diagrams using GLSL shaders and animate them. First basic ones, then fancier ones with different effects. Before writing the shaders, you'll need to set up your graphics API to use them correctly. I'll be using Vulkan, and this setup also works for OpenGL. The setup I'll use is this, drawing a basic full viewport quad, and drawing the Voronoi diagram entirely from the fragment shader with the data we sent to it. Here I'm drawing this quad without vertex buffer, as detailed in my previous video. Note that, with this setup, if you want anti-aliasing to avoid jaggies, the command multi-sample anti-aliasing won't work between the Voronoi cells as the edges of the two triangles spanning the viewport won't match the cell's edges. Instead, I will use super sample anti-aliasing. This can be achieved by also activating the sample rate shading Vulkan device feature and using the GL sample ID variable in the fragment shader which will force the shader to be evaluated per sample instead of per fragment. This is available since GLSL version 4.0 and works fine on my NVIDIA GPU. As for the data to be sent to the fragment shader, you can transfer it using storage buffers, uniform buffers or Vulkan push constants. For general information, such as the resolution, time and number of points, I'll use push constants. For the points data, which are bigger and will be modified for later animation, I'll use storage buffers. This is it for the CPU side setup. We have a window we can draw on with the fragment shader, and data we can use in shaders to draw Voronoi diagrams. We can now start drawing. To draw a basic Voronoi diagram, we will need the data for the resolution, the number of seeds, and the position and color of each seed. We can initialize the resolution to the window size, the number of seeds to the constant we want, and the buffer of seeds to random positions and colors. I chose the position to be between 0 and 1 on the vertical axis, and between 0 and the width of a height ratio on the horizontal axis. This puts both axes to the same scale, for easier distance calculation in the shader. As I'm using anti-aliasing, the first thing I do is use the GL sample ID variable. As I don't actually need it for Vulkan to keep it after shader compilation, I'll create a dummy check that will never be true, but such that the compiler won't know about it. The GL sample ID variable is a signed integer, but at least zero, so I can write that if it is equal to minus one, discard the sample which will never happen. Then, as each point of the viewport should be given the color of the closest seed for it to be a Voronoi tessellation, I need to find the closest seed to the current sample. I can simply brute force it by checking the distances to all seeds and keeping the index of the seed closest to my sample. This is what I'll stick to. In order to correctly calculate the distances, we need to map the sample coordinates to the range of available seed positions. GL frag coord returns the location of the sample in window coordinates, that is, in pixels. Therefore, dividing the x and y positions given by GL frag coord by the height of the window maps its position to 0, 1 on the vertical axis and 0 width of a height on the horizontal axis which are the same bounds as the seed's positions, enabling proper distance calculation. You can now simply calculate the Euclidean distance with the Pythagoras theorem given the x and y differences. Then, assign the color of the closest seed to the sample, and here is a Voronoi diagram. In order to add visual points for the seeds of the diagram, we can check whether the distance from our sample to the closest seed is below a certain threshold. I'll make this threshold decrease as the number of seeds increases, so that they are always rendered relatively nicely. Choose an inner color as well as an outer color to make sure they are visible on any surface. 
In order to animate a Voronoi diagram, we can move its seeds. I will make them move linearly by adding the direction of the seed times the speed constant times delta time every frame, until they hit the border of the window, in which case they will respawn on the other side. This can be done efficiently using a compute shader, available in Vulkan or in OpenGL 4.3 and higher. Before writing the shader itself, in the application code, I will link the shader, create a compute pipeline that will use the shader, and run it every frame before drawing. Now create the shader, write its version, compute layout, receive the input push constants, and the seeds buffer will be updating. In the main function, get the index of the invocation and modify the seed position at that index in the data buffer. It will simply add to the position the seed direction multiplied by the speed constant and delta time, and will bring it back to the other side if the new seed position exceeds the limits of the window. Note that you can try any kind of movement or even interaction, not just linear trajectory and constant speed. We can also update the colors of the seeds. Here, I can for example randomize them all every frame, using a pseudo-random number generator within the shader. A cool thing we can do as well is using distance functions other than the Euclidean distance. First, let's see the Chebyshev distance. The Chebyshev distance equals the biggest difference along any of the axes. Here we have two axes, so the Chebyshev distance is the greater among the x and y differences between the sample and the closest point to it. It corresponds to the distance as seen by a king of chess. There is also a generalization of the Euclidean distance called the Minkowski distance. It is calculating by summing both axis differences each to the power of a float a and returning the a-th root of the result. The formula for the Euclidean distance is this exact function with a equals 2. At a equals 1, the distance is called the Manhattan distance, which looks like this. Smaller values stiffen the result, while higher values make it smoother. Finally, we can also add borders to the cells in the result. I'll choose the border color to be black. First, we can create a simple radial border, such that if the distance is above a threshold, the sample turns black. Increasing this threshold with time nicely fills space from radial expansion. We can also create a border that looks more cellular. It will be bigger the farther the bisection is between two seeds. I like the result when the condition is whether the difference between the two closest distances divided by the distance to the closest seed squared is below a given threshold. Here, a bigger threshold means a bigger and rounder border between cells. Using a Minkowski distance with a parameter that depends on the exposition of the sample and giving a cellular border with a parameter that depends on the y position of the sample gives the thumbnail of this video. And that's all I had to share. I hope you enjoyed the journey.